My name is Peter Krauskopf. I've been working here at Bryan Research and Engineering for a little over 12 years now. I've been primarily in the support area, so I take care of trainings and answering emails and phone calls when there are questions about Promax. And it is my privilege today to present to you all how the control valve sizing works in Promax. And so the idea will be to go through and demonstrate how thing, how control valve sizing is done in Promax and what the tools you have at your disposal to use to do that. So in Promax, the main tool that we have is the control valve sizing analysis. It is an, analy it is an analysis that will appear in the list of analyses for a stream. And so I'll show you all of that here in a little bit. We'll get through a few things here to begin with. The calculations that are done in that analysis are based on an implementation of the ANSI ISA and IEC standards, basically as presented in the Fisher Valve Handbook. The standards have some inherent assumptions that affect the accuracy of these of the correlations that they have presented in their standards. Those correlations are best used for single phase flow, most accurate for single component, although I I don't know of any <laughs> chemical engineering application where it is truly single component. It, they need to be Newtonian fluids. The vapors should behave or have ideal gas heat capacity ratios between 1.08 and 1.65. The valves should have their XT factor less than 0 0.84, and the valve CV divided by the valve size squared should be less than 30. I'm not exactly certain what happens if any of those are broken. I would just assume that it means that the accuracy of the results become questionable, or at least more questionable than what they already are. And therefore you would definitely want, if any of those are broken, you would definitely want to double check your sizing with an actual valve vendor or with actual testing of the valve under the conditions that you're hoping to use it to verify that it is sized appropriately. I've decided that the best way to do this is to walk through a couple of case studies with you and show you how the sizing can be done. So let's open up Promax here. I'm gonna to toss that over here on the side and we're gonna open up Promax. While it's opening, our first case is gonna be dealing with a liquid valve. So we're gonna have liquid propane as our inlet and we have 800 gallons flowing in an eight inch line it's a well oversized line and so they know that they are probably not going to be operating at least with that flow rate with an eight inch valve and so there are a couple of options of valves that they would like to figure out which one will work best they want to maintain a pressure drop of 25 PSI over the valve. So to model this in Promax, we're going to start with our environment. Since this is propane, we're gonna come in, we'll select either SRK or Peng Robinson, it does not matter which. I'm gonna go with Peng Robinson for now because it showed up on the list first and we'll add in our propane. Let's bring in our process stream. We'll set up our process stream. The stream conditions are going to represent the upstream conditions of the valve. 
So this is going to be 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to be 300 PSIG. And we have 800 gallons per minute that are flowing. The composition is gonna be 100% propane. And to do the control valve sizing, we're gonna to go to the analysis tab. We're going to select add analysis. And here in the, in the C's is the control valve analysis. And this is what is going to help us size and determine what control valve we will want to use. So we'll click OK. So there are a few options here. There's a type, user defined is the default. There are, uh, so there are some Nora seal valves in here. There are some Fisher valves in here and there's some Bauman valves in here. We don't necessarily have every possible valve by these manufacturers in here, but we have a fair number of them and you can test them out and or if you have a particular valve in mind from these vendors you can go in and see if we have anything uh, already in there this will these already have a number of items in there they typically will have the percent open as a function or the percent open with the cv and other parameters as functions of that percent open keeps a whole lot of the information that we'll need to be putting in already organized and available. We'll go ahead and keep this as user defined for now. We'll come back and I'll show you how you can use the vendor information as well in a little bit. So we'll start with our user defined. Based on the information we have about the valves that we're going to choose from, we can come in here, we'll give our valve CV. <clears throat> our valve diameter is gonna be three inches. The upstream, by default, Promax is then going to assume that the upstream and downstream line sizes are the same size as the valve diameter. In this particular case, that's not what happens, and so we'll need to change that the stream temperature and pressure are available here to compare. We want to obtain a 25 pound pressure drop across this valve. And then we need to provide the following three factors. We need to provide the liquid pressure recovery factor, which we are given for this valve is 0.89. We need to provide the style modifier. If you don't have that information, you can go with a value of one. The style modifier is important if you are working with either very viscous fluids or very low flow rates. The style modifier becomes important when the valve is operated under non-turbulent conditions. If the valve is operated under turbulent conditions, setting this value to one is not going to change the results. The XT is important if you are working with a vapor fluid flowing through your valve. In this case, we don't necessarily need it because we aren't having a vapor flow through the valve, it's a liquid. And so we can set this one to one. If you actually have these values from your valve, you can put those in and that would be the recommended values for that. Again, if you select the valve from our small little database that we've collected of the different valves from the vendors, this information is already available within that data. 
So those are the basic inputs that are needed to size the valve. We need to provide an initial estimate of what we think the CV will be. We need to provide information about the size of the valve and the pipes leading into and out of the valve. You don't have to provide a pressure drop. You can if you wish, but you don't have to. If you leave it blank, Promax will basically tell you what the pressure drop is for your flow rate and the valve CV. And then you will have to provide the appropriate values for the FL, the FD, and the XT. Once that information is in, we'll click Solve. And then a number of items are populated. You'll see that a lot of these are yellow. And the yellow is there to make you realize that there are warnings down here and that there are conditions that you want to pay attention to. So a good bit of all of the other parameters that are used in the calculations for the various equations in the standards are all down here. So you can double check your our values with what you would get by if you do it by hand. The big, op, the big reason that all of these are yellow right now is that this calculated CV is larger than the valve CV. So how the calculated CV is obtained is we take this pressure drop and the stream flow rate with this FL and determine what CV would be required to allow this flow rate through a 25 pound pressure drop. For this amount of flow to go through, we would have to have a larger CV. If we try our larger valve, so if we go to our 203, obviously we would expect this one to work. And so this is now a 0 0.91. And so when this one solves, everything is, or there are no bright yellow fields. You'll see that the required CV for our system is, or for our current flow rate is 117. We can go up to 203, and so we would not be operating at full open, obviously, under these conditions. The mass flow at 203 across a 25-pound pressure drop is 351,000 pounds per hour. So this calculated mass flow is obtained by the CV that you have put in and the pressure drop that you have put in. The choked mass flow is the mass flow that is obtained whenever you are operating at the choked pressure drop and this CV. So there's a question as to what is the type of valve? So in this case, it is user-defined. These are effectively globe valves I, uh, uh, that we have, but in reality, they could be pretty much any type of control valve, as long as you know the appropriate parameters to be used in the equations that are, that are in the effectively the Fisher handbook then you can use this analysis to obtain a size. So we need a valve size, we need a valve CV, and you need these three parameters for the sizing to be calculated. We have basically determined here that our three inch valve was too small. Our four inch valve will work. Now what we could do and we can come in here, and if we wanted to, we could come in and let's pick let's try a Nora seal um, twenty 
2700 equal percentage valve. We know that we probably want a four inch valve. So we'll go with a four inch body with a four inch trim. Here, you can either set the percent open or given the way that we have this set up now, Promax will calculate the percent open for you. And so if we click solve here, for this particular four inch globe valve, you can see that we would be operating under our current flow rate at about 70% open. We could try the three inch trim and see if that works. That one would work as well. And at that point, we'd have to be open at to about 84.5%. And so this will allow you to get an idea of which valve you might wish to further pursue based on how much extra room you have to work and what kind of response you are expecting in your system for this particular valve. All right, let's do a quick vapor and show how, that's how that can be done. We can, I'm going to add another flow sheet and I'm going to create a new environment. For our vapor, we're gonna work with steam. So I'm gonna come in here to the NBS steam tables and we'll work with steam. All right, so for case two, we're gonna work with steam and we have steam at 500 degrees Fahrenheit and 500 PSIG. We have 125,000 pounds per hour of flow. And so there are our upstream conditions. We'll go to the analysis. We want our control valve analysis. And we can work with the valve information that we have. We are flowing in six inch lines, but we'll try our three inch valve first, we want a 250 pound pressure drop. So since we're dealing with a vapor here, the FL can be left at one. We'll keep our FD at one as well, since we don't have that information. And we are told that the XT is 0 0.62 for this particular case, or for this particular valve. And so there are our inputs. We'll click solve. The three inch valve is too small. We need a CV of 200 and the best we can do is 148. So let's try the four inch valve, which has an XT of 0 0.69. So here, it's still yellow. What is happening is that at this CV, we can only pass 109,000 pounds per hour through the valve. We want to, or the stream says we want to be passing 125,000 pounds per hour. That's why these are all yellow. We would need to have a CV of 169 to be able to pass the 125,000. And I had forgotten to change the CV for my four inch valve to 236, which is the maximum that that valve would allow. And so this is now allowed and is possible. 
So here we could come in and one of the valves I found that is somewhat representative of this is the E D linear cage. There we go. And so if we go with a four inch and solve, that gives us a valve that's going to be 64% open. It has a CV of 164. It allows our mass flow through at a 250 pound pressure drop. So if we want to now model this fissure valve and model the actual pressure drop, or at least the predicted pressure drop through the valve, we can come over here, we can set up our valve. In the valve, normally in Promax, you would be setting the pressure drop. And that's kind of the way that Promax has worked for quite a while. It is possible now to model this as a control valve. And as long as you select a control valve from the list of, I, of, of valves that we have, you can model the control valve. The one drawback of this is that the valve size and the pipe size are assumed to be equal for the valve. It, the, the valve is, calculations are not yet done with different sized piping. The, if that is something that is going to be very useful for people in the future, please let us know and we can get it added in. So what we can, what we what we have is we want, if we model this at about 64% open, Promax will calculate the pressure drop for me. And so at 64% open, I have a 220 PSI pressure drop. And so now that pressure drop is dependent on the flow rate the ups and the CV of the valve. The CV of the valve is determined from the valve data and the percent open that you have entered. And so if we went with 64 and a half, we'd be closer to our, well, I guess it would be, we want a higher pressure drop at 250. So we want to go to a lower 63 and a half. Lower percent open. There we go. So the reason that this pressure drop is slightly different from what is calculated in the analysis is because of this size difference between the pipe and the valve. The, cal the calculations that are done here account for the reduction or the reducers that are involved in taking it, these the pipe from six inches down to four inches in the valve, and then back up to six inches in the outlet. That aspect of the pressure drop is not present in this system because it is assumed that everything is at a four inch. So this works for if you have a known control valve. If you don't have a known control valve, we have the option here for the simple incompressible and simple compressible CV option. To be able to use that, you will select your pressure drop method to be simple CV. The simple CV is a very, a very simple calculation. The help here has these equations laid out for you. So let me pull it up here real quickly. We can, we want to come to the process data tab. The simple incompressible CV. 
this equation never chokes. And so there is no, it, it will not calculate a choke condition for liquids, but it is dependent on the specific gravity of the liquid and the CV that you put it in and the flow rate that's going through the system. And so in a very simple sense, it is going to give you what your pressure drop would be if you given a flow rate, a particular composition and the CV of the valve. This is a very basic equation. So obviously it's not going to account for every aspect of the, of the valve, but it should give you at least a back of the envelope value estimation of what the pressure drop would be through the valve. The compressible valve does account for critical pressure and it gets calculated. And then the equation accounts for the temperature of the fluid as of the vapor or the compressible fluid, as well as the specific gravity it's, and its flow rate in CV to get the pressure drop. We'll calculate those values for you if you put in a pressure drop. And so these simple CVs are uh, very simple uh, assist, uh, approximations to what you would expect to, or what you would need. Great question. The question is, is uh, does the analysis tool plot the open percent versus CV? And currently it does not. That is something that we have had requested and something that we probably could provide, or actually, I guess it does. It got put in after all. So here in the plots, here is your valve CV as, a per, of, as the percent open. And you can see where your calculated CV is and where the valve CV is. Here in the tables, you can also get that tabulated percent open as a function of CV. You can look at the choked pressure drop table. And so this is the pressure, choked pressure drop at the different openings and the mass flows, choked mass flows as a function of opening. The question is, is what to do if the flow is choked flow? The, the fact of whether it's choked flow or not really, and how, whether that's important really comes down to what is your control valve controlling? And it, sometimes that might be a, an issue if you are controlling the pressure upstream Becoming choked might become a problem because you, uh, the choke condition would mean that you can't bring that pressure down any farther. The flow through the valve is as much as it's going to be at the upstream pressure. And the only way you're going to get more flow through that valve is by increasing the upstream pressure. And if it, you're trying to bring it down, it's not going to be able to be done. There are other conditions if you're trying to control the amount of material flowing through the valve, you don't really care whether the valve is choked or not, as long as you are able to maintain the range of flows that you are trying to uh, work within. And so having a choked control valve whether, it's in, whether that's a problem or not is very, very specific to what is being controlled by the control valve. As far as the results here are concerned, it will simply, it'll paint things yellow because it will come across or it will state that it's a choked condition, but the calculations are still applicable 
depending on what condition or on what situation you're working in. The calculations, as far as I understand the standards, don't fall apart under choke conditions. It's just that we will paint things yellow so that it becomes obvious that these are under limiting conditions that you are getting the behavior that you're looking at. There is my email address. You can also email support. I do thank you for your time today. I hope that this has been useful and has shown you how the tools can be used and what they provide you. Look forward to working with you all in the future.